131, welcome back. Let's take a look at this graph. Like always, we're gonna get some key points, talk about domain range and asymptotes. So I'll explain all this stuff down here at the bottom in just a moment. I have a couple of screenshots and then we'll have a chat about how to use your calculator. But let's try and do this by hand first and then we'll check it on our calculator. All right, so things that I want us or that I hope we notice, I've got this x minus two here. So this two here is gonna shift me two units right from the origin. This one outside my grouping symbol is gonna shift me one unit up. And this three outside my grouping symbol is going to stretch my y values vertically by a factor of three. All right, I've got no negative out here and no negative in front of the x, so I'm not reflecting over either of the axes, which is great. All right, so with that, let's get going. Let's start with our domain, always the place to start. All right, domain, I need x minus two to be greater than zero. That's gonna occur when x is greater than two. So I'm gonna say two to infinity, and then my vertical asymptote is going to turn into x equaling two. So let me go get that on the graph. Okay, I would like a couple more, or, or I would like at least one ordered pair to figure out what was happening here. So let's go figure out some key points. And again, I wanna be smart about this, or really, I wanna be efficient because I'm lazy. And I wanna pick numbers that are gonna be nice. Now, I don't have a base two anymore. Now I have log, common log, I have base 10. So I would like my argument, I'm gonna put this over here, I would like my argument to either be one, or I would like my argument to be 10. So I would like it to be powers of 10. The next number I would have picked was 100, but that's so large it won't graph on my, on my, um, uh, on my, oh my gosh, on my graph. <laughs> All right, so here we go. If I was gonna solve for x here, I'm gonna get three, and here I'm going to get 12. So let's see what we got here. If I plug in three and 12, Let's see what those y values are going to be. All right, so if I plug in three, three minus two is one, log of one is zero, zero times three is three, nope, that's not true, zero times three is zero, and zero plus one is one. Okay, let's try 12. 12 minus two is 10, log base 10 of 10 is one, one times three is three, and three plus one is four. All right, so let's do three, one. And even though I kind of ran out of room, 11, 12, we'll go one, two, three, four, right there. Okay, so as I look at this, it's going somewhere in here, somewhere down there. All right, so I can see my range all the way down to all the way up. Let's see if we can figure out some other traits. We're gonna go x-intercept, y-intercept, end behavior, and holes. All right, I'm gonna save the x-intercepts to the end because I'm gonna have to like squeeze that in here somewhere. All right, but for my y-intercept, zero is not in my domain, I have none. For my end behavior, I have nothing on the left and I have right arrow up. For holes, I've got no fractions in this argument, so I've got none. All right, so for x-intercept, am I gonna try and squeeze, I don't know where I can squeeze this in. All right, but let's do this. I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll try and get it all in here. I know this is gonna be a lot, but just stick with me. All right, so this little space, this in here is gonna be my work for my x-intercepts. If you wanna find an x-intercept, you wanna let y equal zero, so I would like three times log of x minus two plus one to be equal to zero. If I solve this a little bit more, I'll get log of x minus two being equal to negative one third. Now this is 10 here, 
So if I write this as the equivalent exponential equation, this is 10 to the negative 1 third equaling x minus 2. If I solve this for x, it's not a nice number, but it's 10 to the negative 1 third plus 2. All right, I have no idea what decimal that is. Just looking at it though, it should be between 2 and 3. So let's see what I'm getting here. If I go on to my calculator, oops, and we do 10 to the negative 1 third, and then I think I had to add 2 to it. Yeah, that's about right, 2.464. All right, so if I wanted to do my x-intercept, I've got 2.464 comma 0. Now, that might seem like a lot of work, and I'm not denying it. It's solving a logarithmic equation. But I really want to show you how your calculator can assist you with almost all aspects of this. The thing that your calculator will be weakest at is the graph. All right, your calculator really can't handle these vertical asymptotes and I'm, I'm gonna show you how that looks. So because this is common log, we do have a button for it. So let's get our calculators up, go to your y equals, clear out anything you have in there. All right, so I'm gonna do three log x minus two plus one. All right, and I'm gonna hit zoom six because I have no idea what my previous window was. And you're gonna see this. And I would argue it's an incomplete graph. So your calculator really can't handle this, pretty much this left part of the graph. It really can't handle getting close to the vertical asymptote. It has some of the worst graphics out there. So this vertical asymptote gets cut off. And this is where we would need to be smarter than technology. We would need to recognize that the calculator is doing the best it can but it's really not getting the job done. So with this as your, as your graph, I would still wanna see the extended part on your actual graph that you turned into me. And I, I wrote you a little note about it, right? That our calculator has some of the worst graphics out there and it really struggles to graph logarithmic functions around their asymptotes. And if we look at this calculator, it looks like it gets cut off somewhere around two, negative two-ish but that's just not the case. It definitely extends below that, so we have to be smarter than technology. Now, the other thing I wanna check is this x-intercept. We had it at 2.464 comma zero. All right, and let's, let's just make sure, actually you can't quite see that. Let me scooch this down just a bit. All right, I wanna show you how you can check this zero. And it's hard to use your zero function here, but let me show you. Hit second trace, go option two, now, you see that your calculator isn't lighting up because you haven't even hit your domain yet. Your domain is two, x equaling two, and this is at zero. So I'm gonna to move to the right. Still no y values, no y values, no y values. I'm getting closer to two. And either on the next hit right or the one after that, let's see, it'll be on the one after this. Do you see that it lit up? And there's my y value, it's negative. So I can hit enter. And I wanna to move to the right until my y values become positive. Right? I want to trap a y val value of zero using this inter intermediate value theorem idea. If I hit enter through guess, there it is, 2.464. All right, so I've confirmed everything that I found almost by hand. All right, so with that, that wraps up graphing these functions. Um, when I give you an equation and I ask you to graph the function, we're going to practice a couple of other concepts in here and then we'll wrap this section up. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.